Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's June the 12th, 2023. We've got a number of topics, including news, several open action items, and JIRA upgrade, and budget and expenses, and a community activity summary that I assembled. Uh, are there any other topics that people would like to be sure we add to the agenda? Okay, then let's go over the topics we've got. So by way of announcement, Jenkins 2.401.2 release candidate will be available this Wednesday. Special thanks to Chris Stern for his work as release lead. Um, Debian 12 has released last Saturday. Uh, it's a nice operating system upgrade. Important to note that it does not offer Java 11. So our documentation will be updated to guide people to use Java 17. That way we don't have to explain that on Debian 12, Java 11 is not even available from the operating system provider. And the last topic I had was a reminder that the CDF Technical Oversight Committee election is in progress. I've been nominated from the Jenkins project. There are only four seats on the committee, application by six candidates. I would love to have your vote if you've received a, an invitation to vote. Any questions on any of the news items? Okay, next topic then is the action items. So let's take a look here. Easy CLA documentation not happened yet. Um, Alexander, I believe there was some interaction there that might need more on this. Do I remember correctly, or am I am I forget am I off base? Uh, on the documentation part, I'm not too sure, but I think last week or the week before, Chris Stern submitted an ICLA. Ah, that's what it was. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, so yeah, Chris they, Stern's they, they submitted the signed PDF and one through the Linux Foundation. Ah, okay, so he took both paths. Yeah, very good. Okay, thank you. All right. And that was, now that I think about it, I remember that was so that Chris wants to join the Linux, the the uh, security team. And Vadek Folonier is interested in that, if I understand correctly. Yeah, but Vadek confirmed that Chris is in need of a ICLA now. That is just for future action, I think. Ah, okay. So the ICLA was not strictly required no. for current at efforts. least not yet. Great. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Next topic was a pull request to com combine sub-project and special intergroups and in interest groups into a single concept. I have not done that yet. I've gotten started on other things, but not, not successful yet. Retire the Jenkins, the Chinese Jenkins site is in progress in that it's no longer on the header. But we've got more to do in terms of getting the the sub pages under the site redirected. Right now, um, for instance, the install instructions are two years out of date, and we've had an awful lot of changes in installation instructions in two years. It's really bad that we're showing Chinese users incorrect and flawed install documents. So this is one on Kevin's shoulders. Kevin, we we'll trust you'll take it forward. Then I had the item to archive the governance meeting notes. Sorry, no progress. Uh, retrospective on the signing certificate renewal progress. I've opened the document, but not started that. Again, sorry. I am proud to say the next one I have completed. The reimbursement process for the code signing certificate is done. I have the money. The process worked. Thanks to Oleg, especially because it took a number of steps for us to figure out how to get that money out of the account through the Linux Foundation into my account. And we have one other reimbursement that's been successful, thanks to Vadek Falonia. So positive on both. Any questions on the open action items? Okay, so the next topic is the Linux Foundation ticket to upgrade from JIRA 8 to JIRA 9. Thanks to Alex for this one. He noted that JIRA 8 is end of life within the next, what is it, Alex? I think it's within a matter of 
a few months or less than less months. than a year. Okay. Yeah, at least in October this year, I guess. So I had asked the question, Johnson Wen from Linux Foundation asked me on 30th of May if we had a specific timeline. My answer was not really. So long as we're done with Jira 8, well before the end of support of Jira, of Jira 8, we're fine with that. Anyone have any concerns about that? Do you want do you want me to put pressure on them to say, no, we need to do it much earlier than, say, August? Okay, great. All right, next topic then was budget and expenses. And I'm proud to say that Vodak Felonia has been reimbursed. Now, the rest of you may not say that's a very big deal, the $52.99 reimbursement, but it's taken us as much as two years to get this reimbursement finally closed. He confirmed the money has arrived in his account finally. So it's a reminder that when we have expenses, the easiest way to do it is have somebody from Linux Foundation use their card to pay the thing rather than any of us using our own funds and trying to get reimbursed. It's just much easier if we make them do the payment. They'll figure out how to route the money then. Any questions on that one? Okay, next topics then are community topics. And uh, the topics that I've got, I'm open to any of these that, that are particularly of interest to those of you who are in the meeting. If you, if you want to say, hey, let's talk about this one first or that one, I'm happy to move things around. Okay, with no change, then we've got an active project with JFrog trying to reduce the bandwidth that we're using on repo.jenkinsci.org. We're proud to say that we reduced by 20 terabytes a month in April compared to previous months. And that's a nice reduction, but they really think that we need to do more. And we're, we tried, we did a test drive brownout, a reduced functionality test by shutting off the JGit copy that we have, and it was disruptive. And because of that, we're going to have to now talk to JFrog about what other alternatives are there. So we'll we'll be doing that work with the infra team to identify ways to reduce bandwidth use. The most flagrant abuser of the bandwidth has already been banned, but they're confident there are other things we can do to reduce bandwidth use further. And since they're paying for the bandwidth, it's important to them that we find ways to reduce it. Any questions there? Okay, prototype JS. So this one is a special thanks to Basil Crow and to Tim Jacom. Uh, Prototype is a JavaScript library from 2010, last released, I believe, in 2013 or maybe 2015. So in the world of JavaScript, it's ancient, and it disrupts the use of JavaScript in other ways in Jenkins Core. So the progress is being made to remove it completely from Jenkins Core and from the entire plugin suite. Uh, it's, it's references to it have been removed from Jenkins core already as of 2.406 and key plugins have received pull requests and there's a feature flag so that those of us who are testing and interacting after 2.406, we can actually disable prototype completely to see how it behaves. So Basil, is there anything additional you wanted to share on this one? No, I think you covered it. Um... So it'd be great to see more help to adapt plugins because that's really what we're blocked on in order to complete the project. Right. And this, this sheet that Basel has been maintaining is a, is a marvelous piece of work in terms of seeing where can I help? So when, when volunteers come saying, Hey, I'd like to help the Jenkins project. Any one of these rows is a good way to say you here, here, you can learn some JavaScript and help the Jenkins project in a substantial way by applying to your work to one of these plugins. The red lines are are very much wide open, ready to have somebody help. And yeah, rows, can... rows 22 to 24 are a good place to start because they're a high installation count, you know, in the 66,000 installs range. So I don't, I don't think we could realistically do anything until those have been adapted, for example. 
Agreed. Thank you. Any questions to Basel on the progress on prototype JS removal? Um, I have a question. So uh, what is the plan? When do we uh, want to switch it in the opposite way? So it is enabled or disabled by default and yeah, users can enable it if something's wrong in their machine. So it, well, I don't have any pull request to do that. So I there's no plan on my side. I think Tim has a draft pull request to do that. And I don't know what his plans are for it. Okay. But you don't know if it's if it will be part of the next LTS release or not yet. Okay. I'd be shocked if oh go ahead, Basil. I shouldn't answer. No, I I don't have any uh I don't have any knowledge of whether of when no. Tim plans to take that pull request out of draft state. But until the spreadsheet is more <clears throat> green, I don't think we could do it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was my assessment because if we if we dropped prototype today, any user of the credentials plugin and that's two hundred and eighty thousand users, to would be broken, right? So so that's the today's not the time, and I think the same thing applies. We've seen at least down to the thirty thousand level or the ten thousand installs level that we really want to get those resolved. Any other questions? Okay, next topic then is HTML unit three upgrades. So this one, the HTML unit project changed their package name and changed some of their APIs in their upgrade from two to three. And Tim Jacome and Basel have, have done the preparatory work. Tim has tooling that creates pull requests. You can see the hyperlinks here. The test harness has been upgraded. Core has been upgraded. The plugin Palm has, the plugin Bill of Materials, and there are 150 open plugin pull requests. So there's, there's still a lot of work to do there, but the work is proceeding. It's this one, because it's all test infrastructure, is not a risk of breaking Jenkins users at runtime. The challenge is if you choose to upgrade to plugin Palm 4.66 or newer, you need to adapt yourself to HTML unit three. Now, Uli and Alex, I believe you're both also plugin maintainers. Are there any things that you've experienced in your plugins around this that you wanted to highlight? I am not using HTML unit in oh, any oh, of good. my plugins. I'm okay. using real user interface tests with acceptance test harness. So okay. In my plugins, it yeah, it seemed that HTML unit is something one should not use anymore. So that's I completely removed it in, from my plugin tests, and I'm using uh, real browser tests with uh, AT, ATH. Great, thank you, Alex. Anything from you in terms of your use, or are are you use doing any work in areas that use HTML unit three? I was just checking. I have received one PR from Tim, <clears throat> updating and it went pretty smooth, updating the imports and changing a couple of methods, but that was basically it. Checks went green and I merged that last week. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Any others who want to highlight any items? Next topic then is the Guava 32 upgrade surprise and success story. Basel, you want to tell it a little bit? Oh, uh, well, the upgrade of Guava in 2.406 had a bug for Windows users when creating temporary files. And uh, there were two plugins that used Guava to create temporary files, Artifactory and Checkmarks. So those were broken on Windows uh, with 2.406. But we were able to get in contact with the Guava developers and they fixed this problem in a new version of Guava, which we should be releasing in Jenkins core tomorrow in the latest weekly. So that should resolve the Windows issue that we saw. I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks very much. For me, that's a great success story that one open source project helped another detected a problem. That other project provided a fix promptly and we got it integrated. Very nice. <clears throat> 
And they, they added a Windows CI build to Guava, so they shouldn't have any problems like this in the future either. Yeah, and, and that's that's especially valuable, I think, that yes, that means they're testing Windows more than they ever tested it before. We like that. Great. Um, Google Summer of Code is continuing, and the early end of life for CentOS 7 has been announced, and we're going to accelerate the visibility of that warning so that it will begin appearing to LTS users at the end of this month with 2.401.2. Uh, it's uh, it's been approved by Tim Jacol and merged. So thanks very much, Alex, for your inputs. Thanks for Tim's and thanks for Basel's. Last item or next item was on GitHub Enterprise, and this one, Alex, maybe you want to describe what prompted it. You gave us a blog post about it. Tell us more about how that's that's working, etc. Uh, actually, I had a chat with Gavin McDonald from the Apache Software Foundation a bit earlier, and I was checking something with him. And he informed me that the Apache Software Foundation GitHub organization is on some special plan that is not available for regular people. So I went ahead and asked GitHub if they could apply that to our organization too. And with the help of Kim Jack, uh, Tim Jacob approving it as an org admin, they applied that to our organization. That brings us a certain set of enterprise features, but most notably, as you probably have seen already in core, these Jenkins dash links directly linking to our um, Jira instance. I think auto link references is the proper word for that. That is opt in for everyone hosting the plugin within the Jenkins CI organization. And given our heavy reliance on Jira, this is probably one of the, the go to features for us. Thank you. You Thanks. edit the Oh, go, go ahead, Mark. No, no, excuse my interrupting. All right. <laughs> you added uh, the task list beta to the enterprise part. That's actually not part not of, uh, that's not part of the enterprise. Oh, it's not part. Okay. So it's know. just a GitHub feature that we're using. That's just a private, that's just a private beta. I enrolled the organization in. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I think Tim did that because GitHub, sometimes they want approval from an org admin. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. So. But we have it. Great. All right. Any questions to Alex on the new new capabilities from GitHub? Okay. Last item on that I have on the agenda was related to Launchable. Uh, and Basel, do you want to say something about Launchable? You prefer me? What? How would you like it? Well, we started using it in Jenkins Core to uh, on the Windows CI builds. Um, so they, they're a lot shorter now for pull requests because we're, we're running a subset of Windows tests in Jenkins Core. And uh, so that was the first of the next steps in the next steps bullet a few lines down. So that's been done. And the next step after what has been done already is the second bullet in the next steps section, which is to add subsetting to ATH. So I'm hoping to get to that sometime this week or next. Thank you. Thanks. Have we had any cases where we've detected a problem that somehow was missed due to the subsetting that we're doing on Windows? No, I mean, if we if there we're still running full builds on um, builds to the main branch. So if there was a test that was failing in a PR, um, but we didn't, but but subset it away, we'd notice it as soon as that PR was merged to the main branch. Uh -huh. We haven't noticed anything like that. Okay, so pull requests run a subset, but the after merge to the main line, it runs the full set. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. And the only thing I can think of where we would have caught problems would be that guava issue. And um, you know that we would have caught that in PCT, but we don't run PCT on Windows at all. So we didn't catch it there. I did run PCT with the Guava upgrade, but it was all on Linux. Right. So I don't think Launchable would have helped us in that case. Thank you. Any questions to Basel on the Launchable experiments? All right, that concludes the topics. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Thanks, everybody.